Hey guys, Anthony Jones here with the Top Gun John Boat. You are in my garage and we are working on a custom battery tray for the rear end of my boat. It's a, This video is going to show you how I did a, a custom battery tray and a tie down system in the rear for just a single battery. It's a very simple DIY mod. I'm literally using like some plywood, some foam, some screws, some glue, a little bit of oil based paint. And um, I got a strap that's uh, actually for a fuel tank. It's a fuel tank strap by Atwood. I'm showing you in this video how I do it all. It's a, it's a pretty basic mod. I'm also going to do a quick walkthrough of my setup in the front of my boat for my secondary battery for my accessories. Kind of show you the logistics of my setup and why I'm doing what I'm doing because uh, my boat's going to run two batteries depending on the occasion or a single battery. So um, stay tuned, guys. Um, I love how it came out. I'm, I'm super stoked about the result. So stay tuned. And guys, follow me on Instagram if you have yet to do that. If you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow me. I've got a million pictures, not a million, but I've got a lot of pictures of the build of the Top Gun John Boat. I'm always posting new content. And uh, if you like the content that you see here on YouTube, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Um, click the bell notification. I'll notify you when I upload a new video. And uh, comment, guys. Send me messages. I've had a lot more outreach of guys sending me messages about their builds. Uh, man, I always respond. If you send me a message, it might take me a second, but I will get back with you if you have any questions or concerns regarding your own build. I love this stuff, man. I love this as a hobby. It's a, it's a cool thing to be able to creatively express myself and my boat build and use some of my fabrication skills. Um, but you don't have to be a hardcore fabricator for this mod in this video. This is a very simple battery tray. And for my setup, um, I did it this way because just a standard off-the-shelf item just would not work in this setup. So that's why I built one. So if you guys are feeling crafty, check it out. Do it. Like, subscribe. Thank you guys. Until next time. Okay, guys, before we go to the rear of the boat and we start to work on the battery box set up in the rear, I do want to show you what I got in the front because I did the front differently and um, I just want to show you what I got and I'll explain. So up front, this is uh, the battery box that I built. I don't know if you could see it. It's a full box. Um, it's even got a lip, but it's all, it's all built in. It's attached with L brackets. Um, if you look on my Instagram, I've got pictures of the box out of the boat, but now that it's bolted in with all stainless hardware and secured to the frame, and when I say frame, I don't mean the two by two wood that I ran as my frame. This is actually bolted to the original metal deck. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's an original metal deck on the front of my boat. And um, what I did was I I framed around it and I actually cut out the metal deck which allowed me to um, which allowed me to do this light bar in here and I had to build that tray a recessed tray custom built but anyhow all this is kind of in depth and a couple guys told me you know it'd be nice to see some basic stuff well I've got to do a battery box in the rear and it's gonna be uh, very basic because it has to be but um this battery up front um, this battery up front is going to run all my accessories. When I say accessories, I mean that'll be my bilge pump, my live well pump in, my live well recirc, my LED light bar up front, my underglow uh, LED lights, my courtesy lights, all my hatch lights, so on and so forth. I got a lot of electronics in this boat, including uh, chargers, USBs, uh, voltmeters. So anyhow, this battery um, will sit in this box that I built. It's got a nice little custom built tie down. Um, Tighten it down, that's where this battery will go. So let me explain what's going to go down in the rear and why I'm going to do it differently. And it's going to be very simple. So for you guys that have simple John Boat mods out there, you're trying to do um, this this tray that I'm going to do in the rear may, may uh, be something that will help you. It may be something um, up your alley for some of you guys that are less is more. This is more in depth. This is more hardcore. What I'm going to do in the rear is just keeping it stupid simple. Okay, so let's see. I've already started this, but I'm going to show you what is going on back here. I'm going to do a simple wood tray to hold a battery. Okay, um, for those who don't know, my boat is going to be a dual purpose boat. When I say that, I mean I'm going to run it in electric only reservoirs and lakes. Um, and I'm also going to take it to the bigger lakes 
or other bodies of water. And when I uh, can burn gas, then I'll put my eight horsepower four stroke Honda on the back of this and uh, strut around with that. So this area needs to store a gas tank sometimes or a battery sometimes depending on the scenario. So um, basically I just need a very simple removable battery tray and um, something that I could secure my battery in the rear of the boat when I'm running my electric motor. And when I'm not, then I pull this battery out and I put my gas tank in. And remember, I've got the battery up front that's uh, that's running all my electronics. So the battery up front stays up front. If I'm running a rear mount trolling, I add another battery, subtract the gas tank, vice versa. So, um, so anyhow, let me show you what I've got here. I literally just cut a piece of wood. This is another piece of quarter inch plywood. I cut it to fit the space. Okay, I've got two by two framing in the rear. So I had a notch around that. You could tell right there in the corner I made a little boo-boo. So I had to add a little little piece there. Um, I gave myself some clearance for my hose coming in to fill my live well. And um, this is a little bit bigger amount of uh, surface space than what my battery will take up. But that's okay because I had to go over a rib and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here and kind of how I got to this point. Um, got a rib down here. And um, so my battery would not fit back in this spot, believe it or not. It was uh, hitting this rib and it won't fit back here. I mean, it might, but I mean, I don't want it all up against my pumps. My I've got a, uh, there's my pump for my live well and there's my rear bilge. So um, I want to keep this back area free. So uh, battery location is definitely going to be here. Um, the first thing I did was I cut out a piece of quarter inch foam as a spacer. It's the same way I did my floor system in my boat. This just gives um, more foam for buoyancy in case I spring a leak. But also uh, just gives me a, a way to kind of space up to this rib when I put my plywood on top of this. Um, another thing it does is... Uh, if my boat gets a lot of vibration for some reason, or if it's on my trailer and it's bouncing up and down, um, I think that this helps. Um, it's just a little added layer of cushion. Instead of having raw wood beating on the aluminum hull of the boat, um, I've got uh, wood and then I've got that layer almost uh, as, like I said, like a cushion. Almost like when you do hardwood flooring, how you put that layer underneath it. Um, same thing here. And so um, what I did with this is, like I said, I just cut it to, to fit the space, but really what, what you don't see is that I added a piece of wood here and I added a piece of wood here to get me up to the height of that rib. Okay, there's more than one way to do this, guys. So you could do it a lot of different ways. But what I did was two pieces of foam was too big. I was higher than the rib. One piece of foam was too small. I was lower than the rib. So I used this little piece of wood to strip it here and this little piece of wood to strip it in the back to get me level with the rib. And then I calculated and measured out how far my rib was off that back wall. And I added this one inch custom rip strip of wood underneath. And what happens is this strip and this strip lock in perfectly around that rib. So when this goes into place, it actually sits on top of that rib and it locks in in that space and it will not move. Um, you see, it, it won't slide. I'm trying. See, it won't go. So now, um, now the battery is just going to sit on top of this. I'm going to sand it and I'm going to paint it to match the frame. I'm not even going to do carpet, keeping it real simple. Um, the battery is going to sit on top of this and I'm going to use some kind of a strap or a tie down to hold the battery in place. So it won't go anywhere. And then um, when I want to remove the battery, I simply unstrap it, pull the battery, pull the tray out, and then drop my gas tank in. Because um, my gas tank fits real tight in here. I'm going to show you how that fits. But that's the whole deal is I want something that I can remove quickly, that's built very simply, and um, not a total pain. I've done a lot of things on this boat that were pain, and I really don't want this to be one of them. So if you guys have a simpler boat or a John boat and you're just getting started, you don't have to spend high-end money you know, on a battery box or a battery tray. Um, you could probably build something to keep it up off the uh, floor and keep it nice and tight and secure something like this out of scrap wood with a little bit of know-how no big deal man so um, we're going to move forward i'm going to show you what the gas tank fits in here like just so you kind of understand um why i have to do it this way and why i think it's the best way for my scenario that is here's the gas tank 
and as you can see it fits in there really uh really snug um it's a tight fit it actually locks under my framework barely that just happened by accident and it just it, it locks into my two by twos if you see my two by two support going down there my two by two support going down there which is a, which basically because this fits so tight in here and it's like locked in um that's why this tray needs to be removable because with that tray in place this tank will not fit so when i'm running my gas motor i need to just like i said be able to pull this out pull that second battery out leave my uh accessory battery up front at all times so i'm gonna run two batteries if i'm electric and if i'm uh running my gas just throw my tank in here and um and, and hook it up and i'm ready to go so just a quick you know swap out um so this boat can run electric or gas but that's kind of where i'm at um my next step for this piece guys is um that i, I since i didn't show you how i did it but i kind of i'm kind of showing you how i did it if you know what i mean um that's all there is to it you could play around with this design idea literally all i'm doing is framing together some wood to keep my battery up level and off of uh off the ribs and off the floor that's all i'm doing i am going to put the foam back in my favorite gorilla construction adhesive i'm going to squirt some of it on this strip and squirt some of it on this strip and i'm going to put this in and i'm going to let that glue up to that foam so that foam's attached to this but i'm not going to do that until after i paint all this in oil based paint first so my next step is to um which i've already done i've already lightly sanded it but my next step is to sand it and then uh and then paint it so that's that's where we're at got the first coat down on the bottom um obviously it's going to need more coats of the uh, paint just want to show you if you haven't watched my videos before this is what i use for all the uh, framing and all the parts that go in my boat um this is gloss smoke gray rust-oleum it's an oil-based paint um seems to waterproof everything but like i said uh that first coat the wood just soaks it up like a sponge so i normally do two sometimes three coats and i just make sure i get in all the nooks and crannies here's a little tip I get a Harbor Freight. I get these cheap brushes. Um, I think this is a pack of 36 little one inch brushes. It's like 10 bucks for all these because of the oil based paint, once you use a brush, man, it's smoked unless you got some kind of mineral spirits or MEK or something to clean the uh, brush out with. So I wouldn't use like a really nice fancy brush. I just get a bunch of these cheap ones. Um, Harbor Freight's where I get mine again. Um, so this like 10 bucks and then uh, this uh, Rust-Oleum oil base is like uh, what 10 bucks. So um, that's what I use for the build. I'm going to keep coating this bad boy and um, get it all sealed up and waterproofed. Got this thing all painted. Um, came out real nice, super slick, oil based paint. And I uh, just applied the glue to the bottom. I use, if you watched my videos before, I use this a lot. It's Gorilla Glue Construction Adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and glue the tray to the foam. All painted up. Looks real nice. I've got the foam glued into place. So it's pretty much ready to go. I am going to take some angled aluminum. I've got some extra. And I'm just going to just dress this corner up. Give it a little bit of protection, uh, make it look a little cooler, but um, that's just kind of unnecessary, but it's something I'm going to do. And then I got to figure out how I'm going to attach the battery securely into that spot. Cut some angled aluminum that literally took me under five minutes. I just cut me a piece, pre-drilled some holes with some drill bits, used some stainless screws. Gives it a little more professional look, and it's also going to protect that corner in case I got a bunch of stuff in there uh, beating up against this battery tray so it won't chip this corner um, but it really just dresses it up a little bit totally unnecessary i just had the material to do it so why not that is it installed you can see uh i don't have the, the greatest lighting in my garage but you can see that it fits really nicely and securely in there so um it's not it won't move it's locked in so instead of a uh, Instead, traditionally, on like a battery tray, there's going to be a strap that's going to go all the way around the battery and um, you tighten it down. Um, I want to make sure this thing doesn't flip out of the tray. 
So I kind of want to mount something somehow from here and then around the battery and down to here. Um, so let me show you what I've got here. I went to Academy. They had a, a fuel tank strap. And so um, I may modify this thing. It was like $6.99. Um, I'm going to use this somehow because they didn't, I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for. But I'm going to use this somehow to secure the battery. And I'll show you how I'm going to do it. After seeing how this mechanism works, I kind of have it figured out how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take, it came with uh, two of these um, mounting brackets. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach one of them right underneath of there. And then I'm going to take the other one, I'm going to attach it on the back side of my tray. And then the strap will go through that and through that and I'll be able to ratchet it down tight and it should hold it in place and uh, everything should be locked in. So we'll see how that goes. That's the game plan. Just a quick note, um, these screws, I don't know if they're stainless or what, they don't look like it, I, I doubt that they are. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use these stainless 10, um, number 10 by an inch and a quarter, some bigger, heavier duty screws to hold this in place into my framing. And man, when these get locked in with these screws, it's not going anywhere. And with, since they're stainless, it won't rust out. So that's what I'm using. All right, got that one attached. Also, uh, also I think that uh, angled aluminum actually helps me give that more bite because I went through the aluminum and through this solid wood. I used the uh, inch and a quarter stainless screws. That thing is in there tight, man. Um, and I got this attached, same thing, inch and a quarter screws into my framework. Um, guys, I'm just making this up as I go along, but it's all coming together. Man, guys, I'm excited. I got the strap installed. And, uh, dude, it works out perfectly. I, again, I kind of made this up as I went along. I didn't know how I was going to put it all together or how it was all going to work. But it turned out really, really awesome. Um, again, you could probably buy a little plastic tray for, like, 10 or 15 bucks that's going to come with a cheesy little strap i like this strap it's a little bit more heavy duty it's got the metal clasp it's got the metal uh hoops here or clasp with the uh inch and a quarter screws into my redwood framing and uh it just ties it down through there through that aluminum angled which i definitely feel uh beefs up that plywood and that uh one by support it's got the foam i mean this thing is, this thing's not going anywhere. It's locked in. It's, I mean, it's, it's in there super tight and secure. Um, it looks cool. Um, this, uh, this closes nicely. So it's not, I don't have any interference. It's a super tight fit, man. In this build, I've been, been having to check measurements twice and, uh, just cram everything in here. But, uh, Dude, it came out nice. So I'm real excited. I was able to work it all out. Um, again, probably not the... Uh, there's probably an easier route for sure. Um, I know a lot of things I do, are all they're all custom. So I'm, I'm sure there's guys watching this video saying, man, I could just buy a little $10 battery tray and be done with it. You can, but for my build, for my application, everything's got to fit a certain way. And um, because, because of how I've done all my framing and whatnot, I didn't build around um, store purchased items. I built everything and then try to figure it out. So um, if I would have went with a tray or something, I probably could have made that work. But based on my framing already being in the boat and I wanted my battery um, in there a certain way, that's that's how I did this. Um, so if there's anybody out there that can utilize any anything I've shown you, hopefully you've learned something. That's cool, man. That's what this is all about. Um, I'm happy with it. It's, uh, again, a very simple mod. I'm literally using plywood, screws, and glue, a little bit of foam, and um, that Atwood, uh, that's actually a fuel tank strap is what that is, and um, I'm sure you can find that anywhere, but uh, that's that's how I did it, guys, and I'm, I'm super excited, so this is going to be the rear battery setup, and, uh, and that's it, so thank you, subscribe, follow me on the gram, um, give me a comment, give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Um, this is definitely for me pretty cool. Uh, definitely uh, cooler to me than the uh, sixty dollar, you know, the high end uh, battery tie down cases. Um, I like this a little bit better. It looks pretty trick too, and it's going to work great in this uh, Top Gun Jamba. Thank you guys.